All right, now we're going to talk about the infrastructure services section. Of course, the infrastructure services section is going to be very important for the lab. It's going to be building the foundation of the lab. So although you might think it's something that's pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do, it's, uh, for, first of all, it's not always easy. Um, second of all, it's, it's something that you need to pay very careful attention to because you're now building the foundation that everything that you configure for the rest of the eight hours in that lab is going to be resting upon. Okay, so we have to make sure we, we pay extreme attention to detail here. Okay, so let me jump over the slides here and we'll take a look. Infrastructure and services, of course, the first thing we're going to talk about here is CDP and LLDP. Like I said, we got to start somewhere. Um, I know that CDP and LLDP, it's like, all right, we know how to use CDP, but keep in mind there are a couple little tricks that they can throw at you. Uh, to make it a little bit more difficult to use said CDP. <laughs> uh, LDP is another discovery protocol. We'll talk about that as well. VLANs, we have to talk about VLANs and how those actually work. Um, a, lot of, a lot of folks here may be strictly voice focused and you don't really deal with infrastructure like this, like VLANs all the time. Uh, so we'll talk about the difference um, in VLANs and how you can configure them in different places. Uh, access and trunk ports, of course. We're gonna talk about how you, you know, configure an access port to connect to a phone a trunk port to connect to a router or another switch. Um, DHCP, we'll talk about that as well and all the fun little details associated with DHCP. NTP is going to be network time protocol and that's going to be very important as well because we have to synchronize the time across all these different devices that we're using, okay? So, the first thing with CDP, obviously I have a sample output here of show CDP neighbors. This is going to obviously show you all the devices that are directly connect to this device that you're, that you're looking at um, that has all the different phones or switches or routers or whatever you're connected to, all the Cisco devices, of course. Okay, so this is Cisco only, which is good for the lab because that's what we're using, okay? Um, so you can see here on the, on the sample output, we've got a switch. We've got two devices here, um, two phones, uh, Celsius Ethernet phone, SEP, is what that stands for. They, they kept that around from when they bought Celsius, which is kind of cool. Um, but you can see that they're on 020 and 021. Those are the ports that those phones are connected to. You can see all the way on the far right there, the port ID, that is the port on the phone that it's connected to. Remember, the phone has a couple ports. It has uh, the port that actually connects into the switch and also a port that could be used to connect to a PC as well, which we will need to account for when it comes time for you know, VLAN assignment and also QoS. Um, we'll get to that later, of course. But you can see, it's useful, obviously, to number one, see where things are actually at. <laughs> um, it can kind of help you map out your network a little bit and, and get an idea of what's out there, okay? So these advertisements are going to be coming in from your, from your uh, phone itself saying, hey, I am a CDP device, right? It's going to be sending out these advertisements every 60 seconds, okay? And then there's a hold time on those advertisements of 180 seconds, all right, so that means that if they miss three of those in a row, then they consider that CDP neighbor not there anymore, okay? Um, those advertisements are very important because if we have, um, we have a couple different versions, have version one and version two for CDP. If for some reason we have version one advertisements, that does not include the VLAN information, which then would have um, implications for phone registration and, and also you know, DHCP and phone communication. You know, Basically, if you can't get the voice VLAN that the phone is on, you can't get an IP address in that voice VLAN. You can't communicate in that voice VLAN. So that could be a big problem. So make sure that we are using version 2 for CDP. That's the default, but it could have been possible for that to be disabled. So we we'll jump over here to the router, or one of them. Let's do the switch, and we'll do config T to get into configuration mode, CDP, see advertise V2, that's, that's the default command there. Of course, could have no CDP advertise V2, and now you're not doing version two advertisements, which could be a problem for you, right? Because if we're not doing that, we don't have the voice VLAN passed to the actual phone itself. That could be a big problem for you, okay? Make sure that we do have that enabled, which it should be, okay? So that's, that's one huge thing about CDP there. Now, a, a, a great part about CDP is not only that you can find out, you know, what phone is connected where, but also, you know, what type is this phone? What firmware is this phone running? Does this phone have an IP address? 
um, how much power is being drawn from this phone, right? They, you know, it's very possible for Cisco to ask you a question saying, hey, um, tell me how much power is being drawn from this phone and copy it from the command and paste it into a notepad file and save it on your desktop as a text file. Um, Sounds like kind of a weird question, but it's definitely possible for them to ask something like that. Um, so we kind of have to be prepared for all these different types of scenarios where we're not only you know, configuring to, to solve a particular question or task, but we're also maybe using show command output or debug output um, and putting that in a text file to, 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 sorry, to complete the requirements of a task. Uh, so it's definitely possible um, to, to have some question like that. But looking at these different outputs here, or this output from this one command, we're showing CDP neighbor for a specific port, and we're saying detail at the end of that. Uh, show, so, show CDP neighbor FA1011 detail. First of all, we have the device ID, which we saw from the regular show CDP neighbor output. Then we've got our IP address, of course. That's a good indicator then that we've got communication to whatever the DHCP server is, if that's local to us, or if that's something that's remote by the use of the IP helper address command. Uh, we've also got the platform that it's on, which is going to be the 9971 in this case. Of course, the 9971 is the phone on your blueprint, plus also the 7965. Um, so we'll probably see 9971 phone running SIP and the 7965 running skinny. That's what I expect to see in your lab there. Um, but it's definitely possible for the 65, 7965 to run SIP as well. Um, 9971 can only run SIP. Uh, we see the interface is connected to, of course, uh, the firmware version, which may or may not be important. I, I don't expect them to ask you to have to upgrade firmware in the lab. But one thing about the 9971 phones, though, is that it does have a dual bank firmware. So that way it actually has two versions of firmware on the device. One's active, one's inactive. If you go and look at the uh, settings button and then the phone information, it'll show you which version is active, which version is kind of like the inactive load ID. So you can easily interchange between those two based on the phone configuration page. I'll show you how to do that. Um, the rest of this here, you can see advertisement version two. We've got the, uh, the power information, how much power is being drawn by the phone. Good information to have, not necessarily great for configuration, but it just basically showing you all the information that you can get from CDP, which is gonna be very useful to you, of course. Okay? So, that's all for CDP, really, okay? One thing about CDP here is that I, I have only tunneled CDP in your labs, okay? So if you're doing the, the hardware VPN, you'll only see the CDP neighbors and not LLDP neighbors. So if, I, if you do want to practice LLDP, then you're going to have to use the rack phones to practice that because those, of course, are not tunneled. They're plugged directly physically into those ports, all right? So for LLDP, it's going to be basically the same thing, though. We're, we're just getting it via a different protocol, of course, LLDP is widespread. It can be used on any non-Cisco device as well. Um, CDP, of course, is only Cisco, so that's the difference then. Um, you can see here we're getting, we're getting the same type of output. Show LLDP neighbors. In this case, we've got three switches connected on each of these different ports there. On each of those different remote port IDs, you can see uh, FA1011, 12, 13, okay, um, is where they're connected to. So nothing really too crazy here, but if I do a show LLDP neighbor details for a specific port. Once again, you get the same type of information that we got for CDP neighbors. IP address, we got the, the actual MAC address, uh, the device IDs, what it comes down to, um, the actual phone itself, what, what load it's running, all the same information that you can get essentially um, through LLDP. Now, LLDP is probably gonna be something that you don't use in the lab, but never know what they're gonna pull out of their bag of tricks, right? So it's possible for them to ask something related to LLDP if that's the case, it's not really that difficult to do. It's just LLDP run at a global level. And it's already enabled from the phone itself, so it should be able to pick that up as long as they've tunneled that uh, back to the network. And of course, we haven't tunneled it here, so you're not gonna see it from your VPN phones. You'll only see it from your rack phones, okay?